from day one and also supported um, hands off HRI. So uh, we've got one, one politician here who's always been on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say the left side? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, as most of you know, I'm Sam the Walker MP. Um, before I begin um, to speak to you about the local national situation, um, I'd like to pay tribute um, to the campaigners uh, that are in the room. Um, I know that it's been several years and I've been with them uh, some part of the way um, where they have fought so hard and at the moment you'll know we're at a crucial point in the fight to save our, our hospital. Um, we've got the independent uh, reconfiguration panel report which is with Jeremy Hunt as you know um, that report has not been released yet. If any of you follow me on Facebook you'll see that I've been in the chamber down in Westminster asking where is that report um, and I even did my first point of order in the chamber where you stop everything and you ask the speaker, it was a deputy speaker, you ask them you know, um, a question um, and uh, so I, made, I thought I'm going to do this, I've not, I've not done a port of order before uh, because we were told by Jeremy Hunt when I asked a question um, in, in, the, in the debate, in the health questions um, when are we going to get this report, we were told in due course so my point of order to the deputy speaker was what does in due course mean? Mm -hmm. um, and it was Rosie Winterton, uh, the deputy speaker and she said well I'm going to give you a response uh, my honourable friend, and it won't be in due course. I'm going to get it you now. Um, and um, she she said it's highly frustrating uh, when the report is there and it's not shared with local people. And I hope the government benches will take that back. Um, but we still haven't seen it. I think they're using the excuse because it's because of the judicial review, which of course we're awaiting. So it's a crucial time at the moment, and as I say, I want to pay tribute to the campaigners in the room who have worked tirelessly. Um, and it shows what can be achieved with local people and campaigners who come together and say, enough, enough is enough. You are not taking our a &E. you are not taking our hospital away from us. And, you know, I, I, as I say, before I go on to, to share with you the information I have, um, I want to pay tribute to all of you because without you, um, you know, we wouldn't be in this position. And I'm not saying we're out of the woods yet, but at least we fought that fight. And when you came down to Parliament, it was a very special day, those of you who came down to Parliament. And I know it was a special day as well for Jeremy Corbyn, because he's mentioned it since. Um, but um, I want to just talk to you um, about several areas, really. First of all, the workforce shortages. <coughs> Um, and, you know, believe it or not, just coincidentally, on Thursday, just before I came uh, up from London, I received, hot off the press, a report from the Royal College of Physicians. And I just wanted to share with you a survey, the outcome of a survey that has been carried out um, over the past um, few months, which they do annually, um, which is... Um, highlighting the dire situation that, that, that Paul was talking about in terms of recruitment. Um, what it says, it opens, the opening paragraph says, the NHS is underfunded, underdoctored and overstretched. Now what a damning statement for the opening of a report. Um, and their findings show that 43% have advertised, this is consultant posts, but we all eventually need consultants, in Yorkshire and Humber were not appointed. They didn't make 43% of the adverts. They didn't appoint. In acute medicine, only 5 out of 26 posts were successfully appointed. 5 out of 26. When you think it's a time of rising need um, and the number of patients needing uh, that support. Um, 63% of consultants report that they frequently or often experience higher speciality training rotor gaps. That basically means it's the last stage of training for a doctor to qualify and then to move on to consultancy. And so they, they are not filling those rotor gaps, so it's leaving patients um, unsupported and untreated. Um, and wait, wait, for the, wait for this one. 37% <clears throat> of consultants currently working in Yorkshire and Humble will reach the planned average retirement age 
over the next 10 years. So, you know, I'm from an education background, but it's the same things happening uh, with her teacher recruitment. Uh, so it's people that are opting to leave. And you know what's heartbreaking for me with this? These are people, just like the head teacher like myself, who dedicated their life to patient care, to people in the community, to making people better. They trained for over seven years, they've given their lives and dedicated their lives, and they're so fed up that they're quitting. Now, that says it all to me, that you know, a true professional that cares about people and has committed their whole life to making people better should opt to walk away and you know as I said before enough's enough and you know the doctors we've got in the room because it's not just Paul we have a number of doctors in the room who are so brave to stand up and speak out um, and you know it's important that as politicians we listen and I'm certainly listening as you know the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and I'm going to be told off by Pat in a minute because I'm going to run over time, but the other thing I wanted to talk to you about um, was um, the actual casework, the people that are coming into my advice surgeries. And I have a wonderful staff team who work tirelessly um, responding to emails, talking to people, trying to help them, following things up in the constituency office when I'm down in Westminster. And the number of people who are attending my advice surgeries, which are usually one a month, sometimes two a month, if we can do it, people are queuing up to come in and talk to me. And the cases that we're hearing are just unbelievable. And um, I don't want to be too depressing, but I'm going to share some of these cases with you. Uh, one, a Mrs C, her knee is incredibly painful and swollen, meaning she can hardly walk. Her GP has assessed it as needing arthroscopic treatment as she believed there are foreign bodies lodged in her knee. However, due to the contract that exists between Kirklees and Coldell and HS and Lacala, GPs can no longer refer directly for arthroscopic treatment. They need to refer their patients through the MSK hub, part of Lacala, for non-medically trained staff. Non-medically trained staff to triage the referral based on a form that the GPs need to fill in. The patient can then be triaged to one of three places. Most cases apparently get referred to the pain clinic, who basically just try to help patients manage their pain. In Mrs C's particular case, she has now been referred through to the BMI for what appears to be some investigations. However, she has been waiting for a very long time. And without our intervention, it probably would have been longer, but we're helping to support her. Another person, Mrs F, suffers with chronic pain syndrome, which is usually manageable with painkillers. She ha she's had difficulty seeing a consultant on multiple occasions, and her last appointment was, was cancelled. Um, so she saw a consultant on the same day, just a couple of hours later at a nearby hospital, uh, and she could see a consultant as long as she was willing to go private and pay. Now, we're getting more and more, and that, to this particular person, it's happened loads of times over the last 18 months. She's actually ended up funding over £2,000 on treatments, which, you know, used to be free. Um, and, and just one more, just, just to paint the picture of what we've got. Um, um, uh, Mr M came to speak to us about the difficulty he had been experiencing organising a bowel cancer screening um, when he went for his routine stroke checkup with his GP. Uh, who advised that he should try to organise a bowel cancer, a bowel cancer screening in the future, but in trying to book the screening, John struggled to find an NHS hospital with any availability, and the result was forced to book with BMI. His GP told him this is a result of backdoor privatisation. So we've got case after case after case.